guys, it's Gail with PopCulture.com, and we are here with the amazing John Schneider. John, thank you for joining oh, us. Oh, gosh, thank you for coming here. I'm so glad you're here in hallowed ground. We are in John's own Nashville place, and we are so excited to be here. And we have a lot to Well, that's about. not why it's hallowed ground, though. I mean, that sounds like, oh. Okay, no, so it's Suspense Manor. Right? This is where in the, uh, I didn't get here till the 80s, but in the 80s, you could walk down these hallways, the doors would be open. It was kind of like fanfare or CRS, but just for musicians. So you'd see Johnny Cash in one room playing the guitar with Roseanne Carter, and, and with Roseanne Cash, you'd see Tammy Wynette, you'd see, I mean, it was just the most amazing place that was alive with music in all of Nashville was right here in the Spence Manor. Before all the stuff that happened downtown happened, the Spence Manor was where it's at. This used to be Ronnie Millsap's office, where we wow. are right now. Elvis had the sixth floor. If the walls could talk, they could tell us I know, amazing stories. I know. Okay, so we're gonna talk. Okay. I want you to update us on everything that's happened in the last month. I know you had some struggles, and then everything pretty much worked out. So talk to us about it. Well, you know, worked out. Uh, it is working out. It's okay. in the process of working out. Um, the studio, the John Schneider Studios, uh, in, in, if you think about it one way, I lost the studio. But I didn't really have it because if you have a mortgage, you don't own anything. Right. The bank owns whatever it is you own. So as, as fate and finance would have it, uh, I couldn't make my last, my, the last payment, which was a balloon payment. So it wasn't like, oh, I couldn't come up with a $700 payment. It was a balloon payment, which would have to pay the whole thing off. Couldn't do that, so it went up to, uh, it was foreclosed on and went up to sheriff's auction, which means I was out of it. So I was at the sheriff's auction, and a uh, couple of people were bidding on it, and the gentleman that wound up with it had never seen it before. I'd never met him. As soon as he, the gavel came down and he owned John Schneider Studios, I said, hey, can I talk to you? And he said, yeah, and he had never seen the place, so I brought him out there, he met me out there. I showed it to him, and it, you know, God is an amazing, it's an amazing because in my wildest dreams, this would not happen. He, he and his wife were in the kitchen at John Schneider Studios, it now belonged to him, and said, I can't take this from you. This is your life, this is everything you've been working for. I see the way you talk about this place. So we, we will work something out. So, uh, What a gift. Oh, my God. Yeah, because he could have said, ah, that's really great, right. see ya. Right. But he didn't. So something has been worked out to give me the opportunity, uh, which is why Bo's extravaganza is so important. I still don't own it. I don't own it now as we sit here. But I will have the opportunity to either buy it outright or, or he will own or finance it. Uh, awesome. After Bo's extravaganza, awesome. yeah, so, so it's really pretty great. And I met his son, who is a uh, uh, a fisherman, and a he does digital advertising, digital marketing, and stuff. So it's really been it's been quite wonderful. We have not lost a piece of property. We have not lost a studio. We truly have gained two great, three great friends wow. because of it. Yeah. When that day happened, tell me what was going through your mind a little bit. I kept checking Facebook to see. I kept. Believing maybe something could happen. Tell me what was going through your mind that day. Uh, that I was a hopeless failure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because I never saw that coming. And a lot of it has to do with this, with this terrible divorce. You know, I've been distracted. Uh, I paid lots of money and borrowed lots of money to pay lawyers who are gone. And the divorce is still not done. The lawyers win. The, fam the, the family lawyers win. The, the couple loses, right? We have, sh she doesn't have a lawyer now either. Her lawyer's gone. Her pro bono lawyer quit because she wasn't getting paid. What? <laughs> what? So, so yeah, it was uh, when, when it was sold, I, I am told they didn't have any cameras in there. I'm told I was just like the, the picture of devastation because uh, I never thought I'd hear that. When I took uh, the gentleman and his wife on a tour, the ground felt different. The air smelled different. Everything smelled different. The, everything I looked at looked bleak because for the first time since I laid eyes on that property, it was not and would not anymore be mine. 
But now and you it still hurt. get to use it. Oh, absolutely. So it's kind absolutely. of the best of both worlds. Well, it is the best of both worlds. Uh, it will be the best of both worlds when, um, after Bo's extravaganza and a transaction can happen or a, an agreement can be entered into. that We kind of have a pin in it until then. Okay, so talk about Bo's extravaganza, and it's also the 40th anniversary of Dukes of Hazard. Is that right? Huh? <laughs> I mean, I can't I believe know. that. that, that 40th anniversary of Dukes. It's crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, that's uh, Bo's extravaganza is one of the. Uh, it's our big celebration of the 40th anniversary of Dukes. It's also my birthday. So we did it last year. We're going to do it next year. Should I make it that far? Should I make it this far? Um, so we have a lot of music. We have food. We have a carnival. Uh, we have a bunch of my fellow castmates from Dukes of Hazard that are coming. Uh, Tom Wopat, Sonny Schroyer, Byron Cherry. Uh, I have castmates from the Haves and Have Nots that are coming, which I think is great. Aaron O'Connell, who plays my son. Uh, Angela Robinson, who plays my bitter enemy and the enemy of the world. And the woman, uh, Renee Lawless, who plays my wife, who I also didn't, don't get along with on the show, uh, is going to be there. They're all wow. going to be there. So it's going to be it's going to be great. We have some musical guests. Uh, a really great friend of the Dukes of Hazard is coming on Sunday night to play in a concert uh, a way that they don't normally do it. And I can't tell you who that is, but when I can, I will. Of course you will. Um, uh, because they are so big that they have approval on everything I say in any picture that is out. So this is, go. yeah, this is cool. But last year we had Kix Brooks. So Kix came out, and he was great. So that was our inaugural Bo's Extravaganza, and this year we've got, uh, we've got another dear friend of the Dukes of Hazard that's coming out to play some music. Does it feel like 40 years? It doesn't to no. me feel like it could at all be 40 years. It does not feel like 40 years at all, uh, ever. Hmm. It's, it's crazy. I mean, I look back at when we did the, uh, the reunion movie, first reunion movie, I think, was in 96, and it seemed like... In 1996, it seemed like more time had passed since we did the show than it seems like now. Mm. It's weird. It's like the more time that goes by, the more recent the Dukes of Hazard was in my soul. And I don't quite understand that. But I think everybody, uh, I saw a bunch of the cast just last weekend uh, out in Music Valley, and we all kind of feel the same. It was like, Five years after the show was over, it seemed like the show had ended a long time ago. Now that it's been 40, it seems like it ended yesterday. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's strange. Time is an odd thing. So you have the haves and have nots. You're also super busy with music. I mean, recent, in the upcoming future, you have Grand Ole Opry. You have yes. Bluebird. You have a couple other shows. So you're really making a name for Franklin yourself Theater. Music yeah. here. Coming back into music in a big way. Um, Alicia and I did the Odyssey Project, which was 52 songs in, in, in 2018, released a new song every Tuesday. Then we redid my, uh, had a bunch of uh, hits in the 80s here uh, when I was on MCA. Four of them were number one. So those 10 songs, we redid those and called John Schneider's Greatest Hits Still. And then, because it was uh, the holidays were upon us, we did a Christmas album called Merry Christmas Baby. With Huda Baby Daddy. Huda Baby Daddy. I remember that song. Huda Baby Daddy. Come on, girl. <laughs> Tell me the truth. Huda Baby Daddy. So we did 72 songs in 2018. Wow. It was wild. This year, we are servicing those songs. We're, uh, we're out doing uh, the Franklin Theater, the Grand Old Opry. We're doing a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of concerts in this area. And we're doing Bose Extravaganza. And right after Bose Extravaganza, we're going to be doing a, a very family-friendly, reminiscent of the Dukes of Hazard kind of 40th anniversary movie called Christmas Cars. Oh. Yeah. And I just finished writing that this morning. Wow. Yes. So uh, Alicia's going to read it for the first time on our drive back to Louisiana. And uh, she'll make notes, and I'll make some changes. And... and uh, It'll keep evolving until the day we start filming, which will probably be uh, June. Okay. Yeah. Can we come? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Um, come on down. It's what's fun. Home, where's home for you now? Here. Nashville. Nashville. And also in uh, Holden at the studio. So you in call Louisiana. both places home. Absolutely. And yeah. you feel at home in both places. Completely. Completely. And uh, we'll drive up here. Lately, it's been once a week. We'll come up to uh, come up to Nashville. People say, "Well, why do you drive?" Well, 
if you drive to New Orleans and get on a plane and fly to Atlanta and get on another, get off a plane and get on another plane, it takes almost the same amount of time. It's about a half an hour quicker to fly than it is to drive. And I kind of like to drive. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You had a couple challenging years. You had the divorce. You had the two floods. The divorce is still not over. And you had the two floods. <laughs> So it's two floods in 2016 and jail. Well, I wasn't going to talk about that. Oh, but. well, you know. <laughs> and probably more of that. We'll send you cards. What's 2019 going to bring for you? Um, you know when you plant when you plant bulbs? You ever plant bulbs? Yes. Okay. I have a terrible brown thumb, but yes. Okay. Well, some of those bulbs will come up through the, through the <laughs> oh, dirt. Boy. 2019, we're going to be able to see the... Uh, the little green sprigs start coming up and the flowers start coming up that we've been planting these last several years, especially last year. Um, so I do believe that, that all, of the, all of the seed sowing is going to finally start showing. A lot of things are behind us. The studio issue is behind me. That's no longer, it seems so odd. It's not mine, but it's no longer a threat. No one is going to take that away from me. No one is going to order that to be sold and kick me out. That's off the table. What a relief. Uh, oh, my God. Yes, because that was a constant, a constant battle of how much work should we do here if at any moment mm -hmm. somebody can decide just to take it away? Mm -hmm. I mean, do we fix a crack in the pool or do we just keep putting water? You know, it, it, it affected every decision that was made there. And now there are people that we really like who are willing to work this out with us that I feel great about. We were planting. Plant. I mean, I love to garden. We're planting. I just planted six shrubs yesterday. I wouldn't have done that a year ago because I'd be afraid sure. somebody's going to take them. I don't feel that way anymore. Tremendous, tremendous relief. Um, so this will be a year of, of uh, I'm not going to say reaping. We're going to be able to see it. I think the following year is going to be the reaping year. This is going to be where we start seeing the fruits of our labor come up out of the, uh, out of the devastation, really. And we'll hope for no more jail time. Well, you can hope for no more jail time, but I think there's more jail time. Um, and that's okay. You know, that's like, uh, it's like hoping not to die. Guess what? It's going to happen. So there's, uh, there's jail time. I don't know how long. It could be as long as 15 days. Part of me says, bring it on, because I'd like to be able to talk about 15 days in debtor's prison, which supposedly does not exist anymore. I'd like to debate that. Okay. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, then that's it. There's no more. There's nothing, nothing else that I currently know of <laughs> that could, could rear its ugly head in that regard. But how silly is it? I don't have a lawyer. Haven't been able to afford one in a long time. Did better without one anyway. She no longer has a lawyer because she couldn't continue to pay her lawyer who was doing it pro bono. So now we have two people in the state of California. She filed for divorce. We're, we're on the third month of the fifth year. She filed for divorce. The only thing that's happened is I have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, some of which was mine, some of which was borrowed. She has spent everything she had. Lawyers made money. We're still not divorced, and I've been to jail, and I'm probably going back. Where's the justice in that? I mean, come on. Well, you can come back and talk to us when more things happen, and we will fight it with you. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> we'll come visit you. <laughs> well, you know, they say you cannot get blood from a turnip. However, you can send a turnip to jail for not bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> for more on John and all your other favorite artists, please visit. Did you call me more on John? <laughs> for more on John and other get my your, free all your app. Get my free app. And check out his app. <laughs> check out popculture.com. <laughs>